Okay, so I've updated my KDE Plasma build. This actually isn't it. This is one I was playing around with and I didn't find that it was uh, was working as well as I wanted it to be. So uh, I just thought I'd log in. I had played around with it a lot and uh, changed some of the icons and the themes and things like that. But uh, yeah, it didn't, it didn't quite cut it. Uh, and certain things, uh, it went a bit weird on the browser, I think it was, where some of the icons just weren't filled in properly. No, it wasn't the browser, it must have been something else. Was it files? Yeah, so some of this didn't display correctly and it, it just was a bit messy. I like the background though, um, but if we go into themes, just to show what I was running, so global theme, and you can see I've been messing around with all sorts of things. Uh, Windsor Lite was the one I was using on it. And uh, yeah, I liked it and I, I liked some of the login screens and things like that, but, but certain things weren't filled in in the way that the old system was so I'm not going to use this one the final version is on this 64 gig Samsung bar so let's boot it up and log in so the username is pi and the password is Lee PSP video I've kept this loading screen because I really like it so I like the fact that when it starts up it gives you this notification so you can see I'm on a wired network and it also tells me I've only got 10% left in my mouse keyboard I've stuck with these icons. They've had a bit of an update. They look slightly different to what they did before. Um, but also I filled in ones, if they were different or didn't match the theme, I've often changed them for something that does. I haven't done it for everything, um, but for a lot of things I've changed it to make sure there's an icon there if there was an icon missing. And I just think that overall the, it, it works really, really nicely. Really happy with it. So under the themes, you can see I've gone with iridescent round. Now this is fully up to date with the latest version of Raspberry Pi OS 64 bit. And if we go into documents, I've got my logo there, but also I've got this document which has all the changes over the time. So we go full screen. So you can see here, updates May 23rd, new kernel update 6.1.21. So that was done all through the updates. And if you want to see the release notes, I put the URL in here so you can copy that into the browser and it will list all of the things that were changed just with the normal Raspberry Pi update. And you can also see the previous updates I did on the operating system or you could watch the playlist which has it all on there, you know, various different things, various tweaks to the config.txt, uh, improving the YouTube performance. I put a load of overclocking options in there. So if you do want to overclock, if you go into config.txt, you will see that there are some overclocking settings. I've stuck with the 1800 because the Raspberry Pi Foundation goes with that as standard on supported devices, and this is intended for a Pi 4 or Pi 400, but there are higher overclock settings if you really wanna go for it, but make sure you've got some decent cooling. So all you're doing is you're just deleting these hashes to enable them and then putting hashes in here to disable these settings. And there's a list of various different bits of software that I've installed. And things like Stressberry, if you want to do tests on your system and you test, test your cooling and everything. The Netflix fix is listed how to do it in there because it's not officially supported on the 64-bit version, but you can switch between them. Now, the reason I have Wii 10 XOS in there is because when I was doing the updates, there was one file it was struggling to do. So I installed that thing because it kept asking for it and it kept getting stuck and uh, it's not getting stuck anymore and it is fully up to date. And I've also updated PyKiss and PyApps in there as well. So they're the latest version as of this date. Although I can see there are some more updates here now. Always updates, Chromium browser look. Well, you'll have to do that one yourself. Raspberry Pi EEPROM update as well. Interesting, 16.1-1. So the way I backed this up was with PySafe, which is a brilliant system for backing up SD cards or USB drives. I generally put my operating system on a 16 gig SD card and then back it up with PySafe. And what that does is creates around about a four and a half gig file. And I've uploaded that to Google Drive. And I've got that on a USB stick. So let's just pop that into my Pi now. And I love the way that it comes up as soon as you plug in a USB stick or a drive. And you can mount that drive. You can also click on it and open it in File Manager. All of that just is so intuitive. It works so well. So uh, where have I got it? Yeah, KDE Google Drive link. So if I Control A and Control C to copy that, open up a browser and Control V to paste that in. And this is what it will look like. So you're just clicking on the download option that comes up in here 
and uh, I've already downloaded it. It is in my downloads folder. Uh, so we go home and downloads. You can see here 15th of May KDE Plasma. So let's open up Raspberry Pi Imager and select custom. So it is all zipped up, but you don't need to unzip it for Raspberry Pi Imager. Choose your storage and then just hit right. And then just boot up your Pi with the SD card, SSD, M.2 drive, or whatever you've written it to, and you should be up and running. Okay, so I hope all this helps. The download is available now, and it's in the description. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.